Welcome to our web exclusive. I'm Mike Montecalvo along with Eyewitness News Analyst Lieutenant General Reginald Centracchio. Obviously today, General, we're going to talk about the announcement that President Obama made this week with the, uh, his plan of closing Guantanamo Bay. It's a plan that he has had for seven years. He's trying to get this through before he gets out of the White House. Before we get to the president's plan, you know firsthand what that looks like. You've been there three yes, times. I did. I've been there three separate times. First time was in zero two. Uh, at that time, all they had was plywood and canvas, and that was the uh, detention uh, facility. And several years after that, I made return trips uh, to what it today is a, a world-class organization, uh, beautifully outfitted, uh, clean. Uh, sanitized. Uh, uh, I think it probably compares to any facility that uh, we can look at within the United States and you can certainly suggest that they're equal. What's the Rhode Island connection to all of that? The connection is clearly uh, a pretty significant one. Uh, at one point in uh, zero 02, the 43rd MP Brigade had command and control of the entire facility, meaning that all of the other units that was coming in, such as Coast Guard, Navy, Marines, were all subordinate the 43rd MP, uh, Police Brigade from the Rhode Island Army National Guard. And since then, we've sent several units back uh, to perform security duty, the 169th MP Company, and several other units uh, have gone back and forth over the last several years. So there was a, probably affected well over a thousand troops from Rhode Island that have served there. And of course, I went there on three different occasions to visit those troops, and um, it's quite a, a story to be told for Rhode Island to have that kind of uh, uh, assignment specifically in that area over the active army and, and that's pretty significant. Well the president has wanted to close this down now for several years. He started this in his first presidency. Do, we, do you ever feel that this is going to close and all of those 91 prisoners be released? No. The plan right now is that um, he would look at closing it before the end of his, his tour. Uh, I don't think that'll happen. In fact, I think it would be a mistake to have that happen. But at the same time, he's looking at, of the 91 uh, detainees that are presently there, uh, one-third of them would be released back to their countries. And the remaining two-thirds would be located within 35 facilities, which have not been announced yet, within the United States, and they would close that facility down. Uh, I'm not sure that's a good uh, plan. Uh, although I, I think uh, the Congress won't let that happen. There's no justification to it because the justification he's using uh, as the president saying, well, it's a recruiting tool for ISIS. Well, if you look at it realistically, it doesn't matter where those detainees are. In fact, in my opinion, it would probably be worse if they were housed within the United States itself. And they shouldn't be given that privilege to even go to the United States, even as a detainee. They shouldn't be given that right. Well, some of the lawmakers are concerned about releasing these prisoners, not releasing, having them housed in their own country, could, uh, you know, spur on terror. For example, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed is one of these guys that's uh, there. Where would he go? Is he deemed too dangerous to go to back to his country? Well, I would hope so. I would certainly hope so. There's a certain number of their high visibility, high potentially um, um, being a problem that they would go back in and start another ISIS or... Uh, uh, probably reinforce that. But I think a main concern here is where would you put them? Uh, everyone says, well, okay, let's bring them to the United States. But I will guarantee you, whatever facility of the 35 potential ones they select, there'll be an uproar for the people well, of that particular. Well, you know, the old line general, not in my backyard. Not in my backyard, exactly. So I think it would be an absolute mistake. And at the same time, I'm not sure if we're going to get into a follow on question you might have that we talked about earlier. And that is that I am convinced. And this is my own opinion. I am convinced that Guantanamo will undoubtedly be a uh, playing card as far as normalization is concerned with Cuba. First of all, I do back and I, I applaud this president for looking at normalization. But I don't agree that if we should take Guantanamo, the detainees out of Guantanamo, all of a sudden people would say, what's the purpose of having Guantanamo there to begin with? So and Castro therefore, would want us out? I think so. They, in fact, a little known uh, um, uh, fact is we've got a lease on that facility for 99 years. They've not cashed the check that we pay every single year since 1959. And they've said we need you to leave this place. They, in fact, turned off the water supply to Guantanamo, causing the United States to bring in desalinization plants. So they definitely want us out of there. All right. General, as always, thank you for your thoughts and thanks for watching.